Okay, section 1-6, we're doing midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. Okay, now, coordinate plane, first of all, in case you don't know, that's those little graph looking things you see, all right? X axis is the one that goes across, Y axis is the one that goes up and down. Why? I don't know. It just does. All right? So that's the coordinate plane right there. Now, whenever we have a line in the coordinate plane, say we want to find the exact middle of that line. Okay? We use this. It's called the midpoint formula. All right? I'll write it on the board. That's it. Okay? Midpoint formula. x2 plus x1 divided by 2. That'll give you your x, and then that'll give you your y. Okay? And it looks weird with the parentheses and the comma because it's two separate problems. This is a problem, and this is a problem. Alright? And when you get your answer, it should be something like, you know, 4, 6. It'll be the one number and then another number. So you have two separate numbers. Okay? That's why it's a coordinate. That's the x, that first one. Second was a y. Okay? So that's why all the x's are in the front, y's are in the back. Part. All right, let's do an example problem. Okay, let's say we got a point at four six, and then we got a point at negative two, negative three. Okay, and we want to find the exact middle of this line. All we do is we plug our stuff in. All right, we'll say. I mean, we've talked about this before. All you do is you label the stuff. After that, you're just picking it up, and putting it in. Okay. We'll make this our x1 and our y1. This will be our x2 and y2. Now that we've labeled that, we've done the hard part. Okay, guys? And it doesn't matter which one's 1 and 2. It just makes sure that 1 is one point, 2 is another point. Okay? So we plug it in. Our x2 is negative 2 plus our x1 is 4 divided by 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Positive 2 divided by 2 is 1. All right? Now, we plug in our y's. That's one problem. We work that by itself, okay? That gives us our x-coordinate. All right? For the y's, we do y2, which is negative 3, plus 6 divided by 2. Positive negative 3. 3. Say so what? Positive 3. It would be positive 3. Positive 3 divided by 2 is mm -hmm. 1.5. Yeah. That is our midpoint. That is the point where we can find on this line. Now, if you don't know how to grab a point, pay attention. You always start at the middle. We would go over one, up one and a half. Okay? Your first move is always the X, and your second move is always the Y. Okay? That's why it's X, Y. All right? Good deal. That's the midpoint. All right? Lovely. Now, distance. Say we wanted to find the distance of two points on a line. We use the distance formula. And this one looks complicated, but it's not that bad, I promise. Distance formula is right there. Now, let's say all we do is the same thing we did last time. We have uh, two points that are endpoints, and we find the distance of them. All right? So say our points are negative 3, 6, and 4, 18. We want to find the distance from that point to the other point. Alright? Good deal. Well, first of all, we pick our x1 and our x2. x1, y1, x2, y2. That mark is giving out on me. Okay? Now, Good deal. Now, all we do is we plug our stuff in. Keep the formula the exact same, square root sign. Our x2 is 4 minus our x1, which is negative 3. What does it happen when you minus a negative? Mark it upon Yes, sir. Makes it positive. All right. And then squared plus y2 is 18 minus 6 squared. All right, four plus three is seven, and then 18 minus six is 12. All right, if you ever have a negative at this point, 
you might as well drop it because when you square it, it's going to go away anyways. Okay? So, 7 squared is 49 plus 144. Alright, and then we just add those two together. What do you get? 193, I believe. And then when you put that in your calculator, you'll probably get something with a decimal. Okay? Alright? Last thing you got to learn today, or listen to me talk about today. It's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Alright? The Pythagorean Theorem. You'll hear this a lot and you'll hear it often, especially in geometry. A formula equals. Oh, that's a P formula. Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Is, is that a formula? Yep, that's a formula. This A Z plus A squared plus B squared, that's a two. I just write my twos funny. Okay, this is a formula. Now, you only use this in right triangles. A right triangle means the triangle has a 90 degree angle. Okay? Now, thing you need to know about right triangles. The most important side in a right triangle. Everybody, there's one important side. It's called the hypotenuse. <laughs> the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always opposite your right angle. It's the only line that does not touch that right angle. These two are obviously touching. This is our hypotenuse. Okay, another way people remember what the hypotenuse is, the little box that makes it 90 degrees pretty much always points to it. So, bam, it's pointing to the hypotenuse. That's the important one. The other two are not important. They're called legs. Alright? That's a leg and that's a leg. Alright? The other one is the hypotenuse. Booyah. That happened. Alright? Now, <laughs> whenever you do the Pythagorean theorem, A and B are the legs. Doesn't matter which one goes where, as long as you have those as the legs. The important part is that you put the hypotenuse as C. Okay? Now, let's try with some numbers, okay? Let's say we got a right triangle that is 3, 6, and 5. That sounds lovely, but we're going to go with the different ones, okay? Because we got to make sure that they would actually make a right triangle. Because only certain measures can. Let's say, how about this? We'll go with, we'll say this is 10, this is 8, and this is X. Say we don't know that leg right there, all right? What's the important side in this right here? The um, hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Perfect. Good job. The hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, which is that 10. It has to go in for C. The hypotenuse has to be C. So 10 squared. Okay? Other two, doesn't matter. I'll put X in for A, and I'll put 8 in for B. Okay? Now, we work it out. That comes down because we can't do it. We don't know X. We're trying to solve for it. Plus 8 squared, 64. 10 squared is 100. We got to get x by itself, so we got to get rid of that number. Do the opposite, which means we subtract. That cancels out. 20 something. 36. Oh. And then to get rid of a squared, squared means something times itself. The opposite of multiplying would be what? Dividing. But this is times itself, so we got to get the square root. Opposite of squaring something? The square root. So when we do that opposite, these two cancel out. And that would just leave x. Square root of 36 is 6. That's the side length right there. It's 6. Okay? So if you don't know the hypotenuse, you leave c as x. And you would just solve for it. Okay? It's easier. Alright? Lovely. We're done. The end. I don't know what to say. What do you want? What do you want from me? Okay. Here's the way if it says that it has, like say it says that M is the midpoint of line AB. Okay, and they give you the measure of B. And they want you to find A. Alright, they gave you the midpoint, so you just gotta find the other end point. Easy way to do it, this is the cheat way to do it. Draw a line. We know M is at the middle, and then there's B, and then A. Alright? Now, we know B, negative 3, 5. M, we know, is 7, negative 9. And we got to find A as measurements, or A as coordinate. All right? <coughs> now, now, to find it, there's an easy way to do it. Okay? You just look at the X's. 
from our end point we know to the midpoint. What's the change from negative 3 to 7? What do you do to negative 3 to get it to 7? You would add 10. Okay? Now, what do you do from 5 to get to negative 9? You would subtract 14. You just do that. If that's what you do to get to the middle, you're going to do the exact same thing to get to the other end. We add 10 to 7, 17, subtract 14 from negative 9, we add negative 23. That's our point. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay. I know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, on number two. Uh, let's oh, right it. All right. Those are the endpoints, and they want the midpoint. <laughs> Yeah, so it's found the coordinates of the endpoint of each segment. The midpoint of that segment? Okay. Now, we're not going to get a solid, straight-up answer like number seven. It's not going to be like, I'm oh, not number seven. It's not going to be like, all oh, the answer's five, or all oh, the answer's yep. two. No. So you've got X and Y in there, and we can't solve for those, so it's just going to be as best as we can. We use the midpoint formula, again. And we just plug our stuff in. Okay, this will be our X1. This is our Y1, X2. Y2. Alright, we just plug them in. X2, X plus 2 plus negative 2 divided by 2. And then our Y2 is Y plus 3 plus Y1, which is negative 6, divided by 2. Alright, now we can simplify this. What's 2 plus negative 2? It's going to be 0, so it cancels out. So X divided by 2. Can we go any simpler than that? No, that's as much as we can do, okay? That's as simple as we can go. All right, now we got y plus 3 uh, plus negative 6. That's going to be y minus 6 divided by 2. All right, now you could, if you wanted, divide the 2 there and there, but it's just going to give us a more complicated answer. This is about as much as you can do, and that would be your answer, okay? It's not a perfect answer, but it's as close as we can get. If they got x and y thrown in there like that and you can't solve for them, that's all you can do. Our best.